Okay, uh, welcome to the underglaze demonstration. Um, this is uh, can be a really exciting addition to your um, surface decoration. Um, this is a process that you would normally use with bisqueware, and uh, I'll, I'll get into um, demonstrating how to use this stuff. But you can see is that uh, these underglazes here, they come in these um, uh, little jars, and you can see they're all these really bright colors, right? And um, this is a real advantage because these colors are really hard to get at um, uh, top temperature. Uh, the temperatures that we use, which is cone 6, which is right around 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. So believe it or not, um, it's hard to get bright oranges and purples and yellows at those temperatures. And so uh, the ceramics industry, there's all of these glazing companies and they figured out a way to um, create these really stable colorants. And so uh, that will allow us um, to use these colorants in, in a multitude of ways. I'm going to show you how to draw with them, um, but there are other ways to, you can print with them, you can paint with them with a brush. So there's a whole lot of different things we can do. Um, you'll notice that I have a bunch of test tiles here, um, and I'll make these more available for you. They're um, always in the um, brown cabinet over here, along with all of the underglazes. Um, and what you'll see is there's all of these examples of what the colors look like with each glaze. Um, you can apply these materials um, underneath glaze, which is where they get their name, underglaze, um, or you can apply them over top of glaze. However, when they are applied over top of glaze, you, you need to be really careful because they don't melt as much and they can change the nature of the glaze surface. So you just want to be mindful of that. Normally what I do is I will um, paint or draw with these. I will apply these colors onto bisqueware itself. Uh, and then, then I'll go and dip it into glaze. Okay, these colorants are really strong. They're very stable. They will push through any of the glaze colorants and they will maintain their color. So it's a really great advantage if you're trying to specify specific color designs on the surfaces, regardless of what glaze you use. So it's really great. The other thing that I would recommend is think ahead. For example, this is, it, uh, is what the blue underglaze will look on top of white slip. So you can use these, again, think of layers, and we talk about layers in class all the time. Think about how you can apply and take advantage of your clay layers, and then how you can um, uh, integrate these other colors. So for example, you could use a white slip, and then bisque fire that, come back and use a red or blue underglaze, and then put clear glaze on top of that. This is an example of white glaze, over top of white slip and blue underglaze. Um, this would be an example of um, blue underglaze with clear glaze. So it's still really um, noticeable, and I'll give a close-up to that. It's still really noticeable, but you do want to think about these different layering relationships and, and contrast and how you can promote color what glaze surface you're looking to use. So you definitely want to have a plan before you start. All right. Um, like I said, these colorants normally um, are applied to bisqueware, but that doesn't mean you can't apply them to clay. I've applied them to clay numerous times. It works. You usually want your material as like leather hard or harder. Um, but typically, my recommendation, until you, you know, begin to get used to those types of nuances, um, I would just recommend thinking about this as a glazing uh, technique. So, bisqueware. Okay. Now, um, usually, the material that is in the jars is really, really thick. And so, normally, what I'll do is, yeah, I will keep these in the brown cupboard. You can use them. But many times I'll have them in these plastic jars um, and they're a little bit watered down so that they're a little bit more fluid, okay? So that's what I'd recommend if you're looking to use a brush 
um, or some sort of other decorating mechanism. Um, I also have these little bottles with these little nozzle heads, okay? And these are called slip trailing tools. It's just a way, it's kind of like a little syringe, so you can make a bunch of drawings and things like that. Um, and I have a bottle for each color. And normally those bottles are in this little plastic bin that says slip trailing tools. Uh, we keep all of these materials in this jar, um, and this jar is always in the brown cupboard, okay, because that's where we always put them. Um, so moving forward, you can see I've already got a couple of bottles prepped here, and I usually like to have my colorants just a little bit on the loose side, as in a little bit watered down. They usually flow a little bit more. Um, and, but if you are going to do that uh, on your own, um, usually these bottles are set up for you to just use. So you should be able to just come in and use them. You just want to make sure you give them a good shake. Okay, now, what's really interesting about these nozzles, all right, is that there's different diameters. So you can create different line thicknesses, and you'll just have to get used to, you know, how much pressure you can apply to squeezing it with how much comes out. It takes a little bit of practice, so you're just going to have to get used to that. Um, however, with that said, you do have that agility to change your line thickness depending on the color of the little nozzle here. So um, this one's yellow. Uh, that's a pretty thin um, line. This one's pink. It's a little bit wider. And then the orange one is really thick. So depending on what you're trying to do, you want to choose wisely. Okay. The other interesting thing is you can see the bottles always have this white cap on because when we are done um, with our nozzles, um, we want to make sure that we unscrew these and clean them out. So I've got a little bucket of water over here. Um, you don't want the underglaze drying inside of these things. It will clog it up. And then whoever uses them after you has to take the time to clean them. So if we all just take a moment and clean up our tools, then they'll always be ready to go. Okay. All right, so what I can do is I can take the black nozzle head and um, put that on and just screw that on real tight. Now what's interesting about this is I don't have to keep changing the black nozzle head. What I'll, all I have to do is just kind of, if I want to change my line thickness, I can just twist out the little needle. <laughs> and then I can put this one in there and just screw it in tight and voila, I'm ready to go. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. I've got this um, little bowl here with uh, white uh, slip and just a raw clay body. So I'm going to use um, some blue here and you can see how I can just kind of draw on there and create really cool lines. Ooh, is not that nice? All right, and I can create really nice patterns. Um, you can get really uh, consistent, right? I can almost use it like a pencil. All right, so it's uh, a pretty useful tool. Um, I can use my red here and I can go back in and you can layer these up. Um, you can do all sorts of different things with these. Okay. You just put this thinner one on. I'm going to do a bit, little bit thinner red. And then I can come back in and maybe do some really thin lines in between there. Maybe do some highlights. Okay, maybe put some dots in. Ooh, isn't that nice. Alright, so this is a really great way to create precise motifs, you know, so if you have a particular line pattern that you want to apply, all right, and I can go back in with other colors and, and maybe, you know, color that in. All right, so sky's the limit here, guys, okay? You can use these as you would ever, you would use like a color pencil or a marker or, or whatever, so, you know, you, 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 you want to my recommendation is to think, you know, with these types of tools, is to think lines and how you can fill them in. Here are some um, other examples of all the colors under white glaze. And um, I'll get a close-up of these. But uh, uh, you, you can see that the colors are really stable, um, and you can do a lot with it.
Okay, so now if I want to um, clean these up, um, the process is uh, you want to make sure that you clean out all these nozzles and that you don't let the material dry inside. Okay, um, if, if they dry inside, then it will clog them up and then whoever wants to use them after you did has to take the time to, you know, clean them up. So we, we, we want to be mindful of our, um, cla of our, you know, classmates and people who want to use this. So basically, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I got this pail of water here and um, it's pretty easy. You just, you know, unscrew your cap, uh, unscrew your cap and then unscrew the little uh, needle okay and you can just wash it out all right it's that simple um, sometimes you kind of have to blow in them um, to make sure that you get all the stuff out okay um, and you can put all of these materials right back into this cup the other thing that I'm uh, would like you to do is make sure that you put the right cap on and make sure that this is closed up because these will dry out um, so you just want to make sure that you're taking um, ownership of these materials and that we're not wasting them. Um, believe it or not, these are actually, they can be pretty expensive. Like, for example, this orange um, is $38. So we definitely want to be mindful of not wasting and making sure that we're taking care of our materials in here. All right, so um, once I clean up all that stuff, I can screw my little bottle caps and then I can just put all my colors into these little canisters here and cover them up. And then uh, whatever I used, I want to um, put back into the brown uh, cabinet and uh, get it ready for the next person. Okay, um, so that's, uh, that's all I got for you with the underglazes. Um, you know, again, I just, I just want to stress that you can, you can create a lot of different designs and layers um, you can create really stable colors, so this should give you a lot of flexibility and agility in exploring design motifs um, and different types of glazing processes. So, uh, you know, I invite you to experiment and uh, hopefully we'll come up with some really amazing surfaces. All right, well, um, that's all I got for you, so uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>